Did you know Shiny Charizard used to be purple? Did you know Shinies used to be called Shining Pokemon? Oh, you did? Good. Then I'm gonna tell you some facts about Shiny Pokemon that I think you won't know, and I went very out of my way to find. But the goal of this video is to surprise and intrigue even the most experienced Pokemon fans out there, and let me know how many of these you are aware of in the comments. But my name is Finn, and let's get right into this. The first one I'm bringing to you is actually from Pokemon Sword and Shield. On the Isle of Armor, there are some of these Pokedex Fanatics NPCs, and for 100 watts, they will show you a random Pokedex entry of a Pokemon to help fill your Pokedex. But interestingly enough, they can be shiny. Sadly, you don't get to keep them, and even afterwards, they won't show up shiny in your Pokedex. But hey, I'll believe you. <laughs> I learned this from LJ Shiny Collector, so shout out to him, link to his channel in the description. Mew is one of the most elusive shiny Pokemon ever. With all the notoriety and mystery this Pokemon has, what you're about to hear is so fitting. The year is 2002, November 22nd, and there is a special week-long event being held at the Pokemon Center in New York, where a machine gives you a special gift Celebi, but you are only allowed one per day. Interestingly enough, there was a 1% chance to receive a shiny Celebi from the event, but even more interestingly, there was a 0.5% chance of a shiny Mew hijacking Celebi's spotlight and being given to the player instead. We all know some Pokemon have had their shinies changed throughout the series, but some have had theirs changed before any Pokemon fan even knew shinies existed. This comes from the Gold and Silver Space World demo, the infamous Gen 2 demo that got leaked by fans many years later, and included an entire beta Pokedex, as well as this Clefairy Sprite, which gains this stunning blue color in its shiny that I enjoy way more than its regular one. Not only this, but a decent amount of the beta Pokemon have a shiny change we've never seen before, where the entire Pokemon just loses its color and turns solid gray. But in Pokemon Coliseum and XD, there's a Pokemon that has changed shiny forms between the Japanese and English versions of the game. And that Pokemon is Jinx. The reasoning for this is most likely because of the controversy surrounded the Pokemon, but it's still interesting to note nonetheless. So if you have a cool obscure fact and you'd like me to include it in a video someday, leave a comment, I read them all. Did you know the weather forms of Cast Form are one of the very few Pokemon that do not have shiny forms? Until now. After over 15 years, the cast form crew finally has their shiny forms, and they're pretty cool! Tell me what you think. If you watched my last fact video, you might remember Yancey and Curtis from Black and White 2, and how they trade you a handful of Pokémon you normally couldn't find anywhere in the region. Well, those Pokémon are obviously shiny locked, as all trades are in Pokémon since Gen 2, right? Uh, yeah, they are. But, if you use a shiny lock removal cheat through the use of an action replay, you can actually unshiny lock these Pokemon. Now you might say, hey Finn, couldn't you just do that to all trained Pokemon? And the answer to that would be no. For some reason, these trades are void of that rule and can be affected by a shiny lock removal. Don't ask me, I don't know why, I don't know how. And sadly, they've never been shiny hunted before, but it's interesting to say the least. So hey, if you have an action replay and a copy of the game, you could be the first to get it to my knowledge. Due to Spinda having 4 billion pattern combinations, it's safe to say that if you find a shiny one, it will be the only shiny Spinda with that pattern in the entire world. But how sure am I? Well, if you were to dedicate your entire freaking life and your entire freaking lineage to finding two shiny Spindas with the same pattern, assuming my math is correct, which it probably isn't, I failed math, screw you Miss Padami, and assuming you're doing one encounter for Spinda per minute, it would take you 5,483,835,163 oh centuries. So, good luck. Speed round of shiny Pokemon featured in other Pokemon game spin-offs. In Pokemon Stadium 2, during the minigame events, there's some alternate colors for your Pokemon that are clearly their shiny forms. We have Eevee, Shiny Golbat, Shiny Scizor, Shiny Furret, a Pichu, a Pikachu, a Shiny Chansey, Shiny Igglybuff and Cleffa, and a Shiny Delibird. Next up is Pokemon Rumble, which actually has an incredibly cool way to find shinies, but only in the original Rumble on the Wii Marketplace. But finding a shiny in this game is actually kind of similar to the main series. Just by playing through the levels, all the Pokemon, even including the bosses, have a chance of being shiny. 
Although we've never data mined this game, it's pretty accepted by the community that the odds are 1 in 8,192. Shout out to Absol Blanc's Pokemon, who hosts Rumble Weekends a few times per year where everyone hunts for shinies in these games. In the new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX, shinies are fairly common to find, but getting them to actually join your team is a bit more difficult. Next up is Smash Bros, kinda, I guess? Pokemon Stadium 2. Again, I'm pretty sure the only shinies you can find in the main part of the game is when participating in the Challenge Cup. Although I'm pretty sure we only have one clip of this ever happening, and it is the Onyx that Worcester got during speedrun. Now, some of you who have played a lot of Pokemon Black and White 2 may know this, but there is actually a way to get a significant boost to your shiny odds. The base odds for Black and White 2 is 1 at 8192. When you increase your Entralink levels and get Lucky Power 3 and use it, it will decrease your shiny odds to 1 out of 4096. But if you have Shiny Charm, it will even bring it all the way down to 1 out of 2,000. Those of you who watched my last video, you're probably familiar with Poke Park, the abandoned Pokemon theme park in Japan. Well, one thing you just might have missed, the little shiny Spinda residing in this park, all alone, until the end of time. Completely alone. They'll be fine. This next one isn't technically about shiny Pokemon specifically, but more so a very cool thing you could do with your shinies. I made a video a while back about getting into the void in Pokemon Sword and Shield. If you're wondering, the void is a glitched out of bounds area in the game you can get to by exploiting some of the boundaries. Once you actually arrive in the void, it's basically an endless area where you move freely. And once you're far enough from named locations, any eggs you bring with you that you hatch in this area will have a location tag as a faraway place. This location tag is also used for Pokemon traded in from older games. I actually did a shiny hunt here using the Masuda method and got a faraway place shiny Porygon. But if you want to really trick your friends, you can shiny hunt a Gen 8 Mon that could not get this location tag in any other way. Just whatever you do, don't get lost. I'm kidding, you can fly at any time. So you might know that it's possible to find shinies in Generation 1, Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, because of the way shinies were determined in Generation 2. That being, if the Pokemon has the correct stats, it will be shiny when traded to Gen 2. But, did you know it's possible to find shiny Johto Pokemon in Generation 1? The way the Pokemon were coded into Red, Blue, Yellow left open spots in the Pokedex filled by Missing No. Remember this guy? By performing certain glitches, you can make the missing no match the right stats of whatever Johto Pokemon you would like to obtain. And when trading this glitched monstrosity, it will turn into a perfectly normal shiny Johto Pokemon. If you want to know more about this, I'm going to leave a great video about it in the description from my good friend Oliver. The Battle Pyramid in Pokemon Emerald is an interesting place. Being able to battle against high level fully evolved Pokemon you usually wouldn't find anywhere else. But what makes it even more intriguing is these wild Pokemon can be shiny. Sadly, you are given the battle bag so you no longer possess Pokeballs, so if you find a shiny, you're dead out of luck. But, by the use of an action replay or R4 card, you can actually hack in Pokeballs. Or if you say no to hacking, you can use the palm egg glitch to get the Pokeballs in your game without the use of an external device. I'll leave a guide about this in the description from my friend Oleg, but some of the incredible Pokemon you can find shiny here are Charizard, Espeon, Metagross, Flygon, Houndoom, and Blastoise, and tons more. Pokemon Rumble has one of the coolest hidden shiny features I've ever seen in a Pokemon game. Oftentimes, scripted events and cutscenes are void of shiny chances, but that is not the case with this game. During the end credits, as the camera pans around the Pokemon on the pedestal, any of the Pokemon you see in the audience all have a chance to be shiny. The only ones ever found so far were these two, Shiny Golem and Shiny Goldeen. I think this is just the coolest thing ever and I would love to see something like this happen again in Pokemon. Shiny Pokemon to me are such an incredible mystery when it comes to the Pokemon universe. Never acknowledged or talked about by the developers and rarely ever explained in detail how to obtain them either. And this is purposeful. Although we may never know their origins or the details about them, 
to me it represents that Mew under the truck and the mythical Mew 3. It's to have a little bit of mystery that keeps some kind of spark alive. But continue to search out these Pokemon, talk about them, research them, and value them. Because they're a relic of the past and the pursuit of joy. And one of the last things in these games we might not ever fully understand. So if you're digging through some boxes and find Pokemon Crystal in your old Game Boy Advance and happen to run into a shiny Pokemon, treasure it. Because it's a message to remind yourself of that feeling of wonder and excitement you had on that playground when things were just that simple. And in that moment, they are. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Finn. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. See you soon.